hmm, x plus y squared. That's easy. It's x squared plus y squared. Piece of cake. This is awesome. Hello? Hello? Oh, I was sleeping. It's okay. I was having a bad dream. I was having freshman's dream. Freshman's dream is a bad dream because it's wrong. Let me explain. Freshman's dream is the name given to the very commonly made algebra mistake where a binomial is being raised to some power and instead of simplifying this correctly, students will oftentimes raise each of the terms of the binomial to this power. Uh, but please remember that this is a mistake. This is not true. My hope is by the end of watching this video, you will recognize freshman's dream as a mistake and you will not make this mistake in your algebra class. So to get started, let's just look at a simple example of why uh, this mistake does not give us the correct answer. I'm just going to substitute in some values for x, y, and n. We're going to let x be 3, y be 4, and we'll let the power be 2. So my binomial raised to my power is going to look like this, 3 plus 4 to the second power. We do have a step-by-step -step process for reducing this expression. It's called the order of operations. If you remember your order of operations, uh, you will recall that we compute what's inside parentheses first. So I can easily add 3 and 4, and we can call that 7. And then the last step would be to take 7 squared, giving me an answer of 49. So if I reduce this expression correctly, I get a value of 49. On the other hand, if we were to apply freshman's dream to this expression, Instead of doing 3 plus 4, we would take each term in the binomial and raise it to the second power, giving me 3 to the second power plus 4 to the second power. So a freshman's dreamer would say that this is equal to 9 plus 16, which gives me a value of 25. So you can see that we are nowhere near the correct answer when we apply freshman's dream. So again, freshman's dream is not true. Freshman's dream does not work. Do not use freshman's dream. Okay? I'm going to repeat myself a lot because, again, by the end of this video, I really want you to remember this. Freshman's dream is a bad dream. Okay? So the next question you might have is, okay, well, what do I get when I raise a binomial to some power? Well, we can look at a few examples of different powers. Uh, if I were to take this binomial to the second power, uh, again, if the members of the binomial are algebraic and not just numbers, we can't really do the order of operations because we don't really know what x plus y uh, would be. Okay, But we do know what x plus y to the second power means. It means we're multiplying x plus y by itself. And you can compute this using your FOIL method. Uh, if we multiply the first terms, we get x squared. If we multiply the outer terms, we get x times y. If we multiply the inner terms, we get another x times y. And then if we multiply the last terms, we get y squared. Uh, we have four terms when we do FOIL. The middle two terms are like terms. xy plus xy is 2xy. So what we really end up with is a trinomial. x plus y raised to the second power is actually equal to x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Uh, again, if you were to apply freshman's dream, you would be missing this whole middle term. Okay? If we were to raise the same binomial to the third power, that means I multiply it three times. If we were to multiply it the first two times, we would simply get this result, x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And then I would have to multiply by x plus y again. Hopefully you remember how to do that. Uh, we would take each term of this trinomial and multiply by x, which would give me x cubed plus 2x squared y plus xy squared. And then I would have to multiply each term of the trinomial by y, which would give us x squared y plus 2xy squared plus y cubed. And then we have some like terms in here that we can combine 
uh, giving us a final result of x to the third power plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. And if we do a similar process and raise this binomial to the fourth power, we would get this result. And if we raise it to the fifth power, uh, you would get this result. Uh, I just wanted you to see these results without necessarily going into detail, because hopefully you notice that as we increase the power, these expressions become quite a bit more complicated. Okay. So anytime we raise a binomial to the second power, it's a lot more complicated than just raising each term uh, to that power. When you do that, you're leaving out a whole lot of terms in between. Okay. In fact, uh, a little bit later, we'll study binomial theorem, uh, which gives us sort of a shortcut to expanding these binomials to any power. Okay. So if we have a binomial raised to the nth power, binomial theorem tells us it's equal to this. And if you don't understand what that means, that's okay. Uh, but for now, just recognize that this is way more complicated than just x to the n power plus y to the n power. Uh, we will talk more about the binomial theorem in another video. So if you're curious, you can go ahead and check that out. Okay. Now, for those of you visual people, here is another look at why Frischmann's dream does not work. Let's consider this large square here. To find the area of a square, we know we can take length times width, or we can just take one of the sides and square it. The length of this side across the top would be x plus y, the way I have it labeled. So the area of this big square would be x plus y squared. Okay. We could also think of the area of this big square in another way. We could say that the area of the big square would be equal to the area of this blue square plus the area of the red rectangle plus the area of the green rectangle, plus the area of this purple square. If I were to compute these four areas and add them together, that should be equal to the area of the entire square. Now, if I do this algebraically, the area of this blue square is x times x, which is x squared. The area of this red square is going to be y times x, which would be xy. Same thing with the green rectangle, because this would be x times y, which is another xy and the area of the purple square is going to be y squared. And if we add that up, we get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So if that's equal to the area of the big square, and from the previous slide, x plus y squared is equal to the big square, then we know that these two expressions are equivalent. And hopefully you recognize that this is the same thing we got when we expanded this binomial using the FOIL method. Okay. Now, a freshman's dreamer, would say that x plus y to the second power is the same as x squared plus y squared. If you look at the diagram, x squared plus y squared would only be the area of the blue square plus the area of the purple square. Okay, And it's pretty easy to tell that if we were to add the area of the blue square plus the area of the purple square, that would not be equivalent to the area of the big square. So when you apply Freshman's Dream to this expression, you're leaving out the red and the green rectangle, and that's a pretty significant portion of the square to leave out. Okay, So hopefully that uh, sort of illustrates the problem with applying Freshman's Dream. Okay? Another very common mistake that I see a lot is the application of Freshman's Dream to radical expressions. Now, we may not have gotten to radical expressions at this point in the course, but we will soon. Um, but I just want to illustrate what Freshman's Dream for Radical Expressions would say. We're taking some root of a binomial in which the power of each term of the binomial is equivalent to the index of the root. And Freshman's Dream would say that we can take the nth root of this binomial simply by taking the nth root of each term. And the nth root of something to the nth power would just be uh, that something, and similarly here. So a lot of times students will compute the nth root of binomial just by taking the nth root of each term. This is also not true. Okay, And again, we can substitute the same values we did before to see how this doesn't work. If I replace x with 3, y with 4, and n with 2, we get the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. If we do this correctly following the order of operations, we would take 3 squared and 4 squared, 
which would give me 9 plus 16. I would add the 9 and the 16, which would give me 25. And my final step would be to take the square root of 25, which is 5. Okay, so if we simplify this square root correctly, we get a value of 5. If I apply this freshman's dream for radical expressions, instead, we would just take the square root of 3 squared, which is 3, plus the square root of 4 squared, which is 4, and adding 3 and 4 gives me 7, which again you can see is not the correct answer. Okay, So just to give you an example of a, a mistake I see all the time, uh, if we're trying to find the square root of x squared plus 4, uh, if you apply freshman's dream, you would just take the square root of each term, which would give me x plus 2. This is not true. If you want to see why, you can compare it to a really simple example. Uh, where you're probably familiar with the fact that the square root of 9 is equal to 3. Now, why is the square root of 9 3? The square root of 9 is 3 because 3 squared equals 9. Now, let's apply the same logic to this statement. If we are going to say that the square root of x squared plus 4 is equal to x plus 2, then that in turn would mean that x plus 2 squared would be equal to x squared plus 4. Now, is this true? Well, if you said yes, you're still using freshman's dream, and you need to stop doing that. If you said no, firstly, good job. And if you said no, well, then that means that the square root of x squared plus 4 is not equal to x plus 2. Because if it were, x plus 2 squared would be equal to x squared plus 4. Okay? Freshman's dream does not work for radicals either. And in fact, if you're wondering how I would simplify this expression, the only way we can find the square root of x squared plus 4 is if there were some expression multiplied by itself that would give me x squared plus 4. And as it turns out, there is no such expression. So this, square, this particular square root is actually already in simplest form. Okay. In summary, raising a binomial to the nth power is not the same as just raising each term to the nth power. That's called freshman's dream. Freshman's dream does not work. Freshman's dream is a bad dream. So from this point on, if you find yourself going down that path and applying freshman's dream, I hope you will wake up from that dream and not make this mistake. Thank you for watching.